A dynamic storm will usher in record-breaking cold air by early next week. This video will break down the newest data on that storm and the snow that it could bring. I'll also discuss the latest on how cold your temperatures could get in the wake of that system. Whenever the flow of winds in the atmosphere, called the jet stream, undergoes a huge change, that is when there is going to be a huge change at the surface across North America or really anywhere. Let's take a look at how the jet stream will change and usher in big surface changes as we go through time. First of all, it's worth noting that as we go towards our Friday, November 7th at 7 p.m., for example, there's going to be a slight dip in the jet stream already ongoing in parts of the eastern U.S. This will not cause much more than a weak appetizer type storm system that will cross some zones as we go through the next 24 to 48 hours. When will bigger changes come in? It's when we get the next dip in the jet stream to move out of the northwest U.S. and southwest Canada and then start forming a huge U-shape over a lot of the United States. Can you see it here? I certainly can. Diving down from Montana and Wyoming to the southern plains and then curling all the way up the east coast. This big piece of energy is going to usher in a strong surface low pressure system. In fact, there's going to be multiple pulses of low pressure that move through this trough as it digs in. That means not only the potential for some bands of rain and snow to cross many zones, but also the potential for a huge cool down, because look at this, the jet stream will be feeding out of Canada and then just diving all the way down into this landing zone. When I say the central and eastern US will be a landing zone for cooler temperatures, I really mean it. We'll discuss these in more detail as we go further into the video, but this is a look at the temperature anomalies expected across many zones by the time we get through November 11th. Using that key on the left side of the screen, you can see many zones from the Plains and Mississippi Valley down especially to the southeast U.S. will be in the range of 10 to 20 or even 20 to 30 degrees below average with temperatures at some point into early next week. That jet stream dip really will be no joke. With that setup in mind, let's take a look at the future radar overview and the newest timing for the inbound storm. Pushing this guidance out from our Thursday when I'm recording this and into the Friday time frame, one thing you'll note occurring is actually the presence of some precipitation in the eastern U.S. This precipitation that I'm about to circle from parts of the northeast U.S. back to the deep south will be associated with the jet stream dip and front that will move off the east coast by the time we get into our Saturday. This is not the big dip that's going to come in as we go towards the end of the weekend. This is that precursor appetizer storm, whatever you want to call it. Other than being involved in bringing some isolated severe weather in pockets of these storms, this system will not be too significant. So when is that bigger dip in the jet stream and storm system going to enter the picture? That's going to be as we go out of Friday and into Saturday. It's not actually going to look too big, but you can see the low pressure starting to organize around parts of the mid-Mississippi Valley on this graphic by Saturday afternoon. As it does so, it will already be bringing in some moisture to parts of the Midwest, where there could be the potential for rain turning over to snow in some cases out of the Dakotas and Nebraska, as well as over into Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Since my last video, guidance has slightly leaned towards a bit of a warmer setup into the Midwest. That could mean a little bit less in the way of snowfall and a little bit more of mixing with some rain as we go, especially through Saturday afternoon before it cools down. Nevertheless, as this low pressure moves east on the leading edge of the jet stream dip, that's when things look to get a bit more organized out of Saturday night into early Sunday. With low pressure pivoting over to the lower Great Lakes region, specifically around Lake Erie, there's going to be a flow of moisture coming up to its south. As that occurs, there could be a chance for some scattered showers and storms rumbling around from parts of Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama over to the Carolinas up to parts of the Mid-Atlantic region. There will also be the potential for some heavier snowfall starting to organize as moisture really begins moving up into eastern Wisconsin, northern Illinois and Indiana, as well as the Gulf of Michigan into early Sunday morning. With that jet stream dip really digging in and the low pressure continuing to move northeast, there could continue to be some snow in especially Michigan and around the Great Lakes particularly coming off the lakes as we go into our Sunday afternoon. There will also be the potential for rain mixing with snow at times as cooler air begins to move into the interior northeast. It might not be snow as quickly as I indicated in my last video for interior New York, parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Guidance has trended away from that a bit, but there could still be some snow mixing in or possibly taking over completely late Sunday. Further south, it just looks like a mainly rain event, especially as you come out the mid-Atlantic coast and into parts of the New England states. That's where there will be some rain and some gusty winds to cap off Sunday. It might not stay a fully rain event out of Sunday into Monday as you work your way up the east coast, though. A lot of guidance has been indicating the potential for some pulses of energy to continue riding up along the leading edge of that main jet stream dip. 
if that does indeed occur like this guidance is showing, as we go out of Sunday into Monday, continued moisture working its way up the east coast could result in a bigger transition out of rain and to snow, not just in interior northeast zones, possibly a little bit eastward from there. That could mean Albany, New York, zones a little bit south from there. Parts of central Vermont and central New Hampshire getting down into Massachusetts and Connecticut, for example, could get in on some snowfall. It's still a little too early to know exactly how that's set to evolve, but be prepared for some messy conditions that could continue into Monday in parts of the northeast U.S. One other thing I can guarantee you for Monday is the potential of some snow coming off of the Great Lakes and then moving down to the Ohio Valley, the interior northeast, and I think there's even the potential based on some guidance for flurries to make it down towards Kentucky and Tennessee, over towards Virginia, North Carolina, northbound of there through the rest of the Mid-Atlantic, don't be surprised if you see something like that Monday or Monday night. Then I think things will quiet down completely by the time we go into Tuesday with just cold air lingering around. Given that overview I just provided, let's take a look at how much snow should fall in many zones by the time we get through Monday into early Tuesday. Keep in mind, in many cases, the snow will not accumulate or accumulate much because the ground is still warm as we've been seeing temperatures above freezing much of this fall at least in the afternoons here we go pushing this snowfall guidance out by the time you get through the end of monday one thing you'll note is pretty lackluster totals here in the midwest i noted in my last video that it would only be up to a couple inches or maybe three or four on the high end that's still how it's looking and again that's going to be the amount that comes down not even necessarily the amount that will accumulate on its surfaces once you get over into the great lakes michigan will get that decent snow especially through the day sunday into sunday night some snow will continue there and off the lakes into the Ohio Valley as we go out of Sunday into Monday. That could result in a widespread 1 to 3 inches of snow falling in many zones, possibly some locally higher amounts coming right off of Lake Michigan, for example. Again, though, how much of this will really accumulate? That's up for question. Into the interior northeast, Sunday night, going into Monday, there could be some snowfall. Of course, there's that potential for the snowfall burst a little bit closer to even the New England coast as we go into early Monday morning, where there's also the potential for some bursts of snow would be down here in the mid-Atlantic as that final wave of energy wraps around at the very end of the event. As I mentioned, that could mean flurries Monday into Monday night. Those flurries could extend even as far east at some point as towards the Virginia or North Carolina coast. Don't be surprised if you see a few flakes there randomly as a quick cloud moves through in the evening. With low pressure set to ride east and bring in changes with that jet stream energy, you can bet there's going to be some gusty northwest to southeast winds coming in behind our low pressure, with low pressure likely to be around the Lake Erie vicinity by the time we go towards our Sunday afternoon and evening. Behind it, there's going to be a pretty consistent flow of 20 plus, even 30 plus mile per hour wind gusts bringing in that cooler air from the northwest. That's going to be coming in through parts of the central plains and then diving down into the Mississippi Valley Sunday and Sunday night. As we go into Monday, that cooler air will be making it all the way down to the southeast coast of the U.S. You can see those higher gusts right there. 30 plus mile per hour gusts will be possible Monday all the way down to the Carolinas. Those will be coming in from the northwest, bringing in that cool, cool air. All right, enough chat about the storm that's going to usher in some of these cooler temperatures. Let's get into talking about those cooler temperatures and exactly how cold you could get. Starting out with a look at the morning temperatures for the Saturday, November 8th time frame. One thing you'll note is that it will already be below freezing for lows, which isn't really that uncommon for this time of the year necessarily into parts of the mountain west and the north central U.S. Further south and east, though, we've got 30s and 40s in the Midwest over to the Mid-Atlantic, 50s and 60s south of there. Overall, temperatures will still be above average leading up to this event. In fact, look at Saturday afternoon. Other than where some of that snowfall will be sinking in to parts of the Midwest, just south of there, there's going to be 50s, 60s, 70s, and even down towards the Gulf Coast, 80s for high temperatures. Yeah, it's going to be warm ahead of the low pressure, but can you see how changes will begin to move in? I certainly can. By Sunday morning with that leading edge of the trough or that dip in the jet stream moving over here into the Ohio Valley with low pressure stationed around the Great Lakes vicinity, behind that low in that trough, that's where that big cool down is really going to be surging in. Temperatures will be in the teens and 20s across a broad expanse of the northern and north central U.S., even in the Great Lakes. Any precipitation by Sunday morning will be falling as snow because of the fact that it will be around 29 to 33 degrees over much of that zone. Further southeast, though, look at this. Still waking up to 50 degree readings in the mid-Atlantic, 60 degree readings down to the southeast U.S. Sunday afternoon in those zones, it will be in the 70s, while back up there behind the front, it's going to be down in the 30s. A big, big contrast. But the cool down is going to start to win out by the time we go into our Monday. Look at these numbers. Monday morning, there's going to be a pocket of 10 to 15 degree readings. That's before you factor in the wind chill in parts of the Dakotas, Nebraska, and Iowa. 
and then in this broader expanse much further south and east from there down to the central and south central plains over to the lower mississippi valley the southern appalachians all through the appalachians in fact 20s 30s wide spread to start monday with this big of a freeze in probably about 50 percent of the country here or more you need to be ready in all of these zones with the freeze to protect people pipes and pets the three p's are very important to remember the national weather service even stresses keeping those things in mind especially when it's this cold outside i don't say any of that to hype the cold up i know very many people actually like the cold and could care less if it's 20 degrees outside and would much rather take that over 90 degrees still though if you're outside without layers on if your pets are outside unprotected for a while if your pipes aren't maintained properly when it's cold there are going to be effects that's why i'm mentioning it there could especially be effects when the afternoons barely hit freezing like they will up here in parts of the Midwest, the Great Lakes, into the interior northeast on Monday. That's not as uncommon as what's going to be down south, though. All these circles in the southern Appalachians region indicate forecasted record cold highs. That means temperatures have never been this low for the maximum temperature since records have been kept. It's only going to be in the 30s in the southern Appalachians for highs. 40s at best in parts of Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas. Really crazy to see. Here's a look at Tuesday morning. It will still be cold, especially around the Mississippi Valley and then eastbound. Lots of 20s. And look at this. 20s and 30s, a frost and freeze all the way down to Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. That's just wild to see. Even down to Miami, it's going to be in the 40s and 50s on Tuesday morning. Tuesday afternoon, things will begin to recover into parts of the plains with 50s and 60s and even some low 70s moving north. It will be a bit milder even as you go over towards the southeast coast in comparison to Monday. With that being said, that's all I've got for the main points in this video. Let's do the recap of the three main headlines. Of course, headline number one, as it was in the last update, a big dip in the jet stream means big changes are coming. And the latest data is indicating it will be record-breaking in terms of the temperatures that will get ushered into the United States. Rain and snow will come with a weekend and early week wintry storm. Flurries could stretch as far south as North Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia at the conclusion of that. Remember, that's that general troughing in a storm setup that's going to usher in the cooler air. In fact, that cooler air will be in the form of a widespread nighttime freeze covering the eastern half of the U.S. to start next week. All right, that's all I've got for you in this update. Here's your reminder, as I do in every video, the maps I use in my content, they come from Weatherbell. Make sure to check out the Weatherbell free trial link in the description of this video if you want access to those maps at your own fingertips. Also, of course, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you stay tuned for my future updates and get them delivered right to your phone. Even if you're watching on a TV, you can subscribe, and I believe you can get notifications to your phone so that you know when to watch. Not fully sure how that works, but regardless, I'm glad to have you here. Thank you so much for tuning into this one. God bless you. I hope to see you next time. One Nation Weather.